Right, so I've got my STL file that is sitting on my memory stick. I've opened the repertoire host, um, it's obviously the Mac version, and under object placement, down here is add STL file, that is on the memory stick, so there's the USB memory stick, and we will open that file there. Open. And it gets put onto the slicer. We then go one tab across over to Slicer. And here you've got a choice of two slicing programs. This is the host to these two slicing programs. One's called Slicer 3R. Let me just click on that. Slicer 3R, and then the other one is called Sky and Forge. Both of these have been set up to cut the slices at 0.8 of a millimeter. The configuration is here, but it's quite complex. Slicer 3R is the easiest to try and configure it, um, but sometimes doesn't slice awfully well. Sky and Forge is a much better slicer. Um, takes a little bit longer, uh, but it's very difficult to set up. But anyway, I'm now going to slice my rabbit with Sky and Forge. So I then select which slicer I want to use and press slice with Sky and Forge. And it's busy slicing, you can see down here. Right, so that's my rabbit, it's now been sliced. And you can see on these tabs it's moved from object placement over to slice and now into G code. So we started with the STL file. It's now been sliced into a G code file. And G code is the kind of language that the uh, printer manages to speak. Uh, and uh, you can see here G90 is actually the measurements. G28 sets the printer to the home position. And then these are actually all the points. Um, on each slice, the X and Y points. So I'm happy with that. I will now save that onto an SD card. So the SD card is sitting down here um, because the SD card gets plugged into the printer. So um, I hit the save button up there and uh, choose the SD card that is no name. Go save. Now hopefully that's on the SD card and we take that off to the printer. Right, so the play preparation. Obviously you can use powdered clay and it's about 45% um, water, 35, 34% uh, water to powder. But uh, every clay varies. Um, here we're using porcelain. I am afraid I do it by eye, and I tend to go from wet clay up to soft clay. So I take it out of the bag, and then I find the easiest way is with a fork to start softening it up. keep working that until I start getting a lump of clay that is that sort of consistency. So it would be too soft to throw with, but it's certainly not runny slip at all. And what I'm looking for is just a bit of moisture on the surface, because as you can imagine, um, the clay is going to extrude, and each extrusion has to stick together, and that little bit of moisture makes sure that you get a good bond between the layers. It also has to be soft enough to go through um, the little nibs, um, and again, why I can't say exactly what the consistency is. If you're working very fine, you need a slightly softer clay to push through than if you're working slightly bigger and with a bigger nozzle. So we've got a, s a series going from very fine. These plastic nozzles I actually just cut off to vary the size. Um, but there you've got a, um, a choice of four sizes to go with. Now, consistency of clay is absolutely vital to make sure that you get a nice even print and uh, 
what I do to make sure that I get that is to push my soft clay through a sieve. And this makes sure that there are no lumps. Because the last thing you want is a couple of hours into a print is to get a blockage. So there we've got enough to fill one cartridge. And then smear that around. You've got to be careful now not to get air bubbles into it. So I fold it and smear it. This is just to make sure I've got an even consistency. We've got the spatula with a rounded end to it to actually fit the top of the container. And I can now start filling these. All right, and you see I've been very careful not to get any air bubbles into it as it fills. If there are some air bubbles, it's not the end of the world, but you'll hear them popping through as it prints. Um, you'll get a little scar on the surface of your print but then you being clay you can always just sort that out later add a little bit of clay i just actually have a handheld syringe with clay in it and that can extrude it as required when you're doing repair jobs so you can see it starts filling quite quickly it takes a bit more pressure as it goes down to get it pushed it pressed in Until it's nearly coming out the bottom, and then just take off any excess. And we've got a little plastic plate that goes in the top because the air pressure is now going to press that down, slowly extruding the clay. Um, and uh, from about oh, two centimeters down, if you don't have a plastic plate, the air just pushes it through. Once again, this will take about an hour to uh, print, and after an hour of printing, you don't want the air pressure to then blow over your print. Right, so we've filled up um, our clay. That slips in there and goes through. You want to make sure that it's absolutely clean there, because that then slots in there. You want to turn that and try and get it as tight as you can. Make sure that there's no air leakage. And then there's a manual on off switch over here, and that switches on the air pressure. You can start to see it coming out slowly. Now, at first, it tends to come slowly, and so what I can do is switch it up here. So, uh, clockwise is switching up the pressure, and if you have a look on top, we're working at about two bars. So, if your clay is too hard, obviously, you need more air pressure. And I think you're then just rather, rather pushing it. Um, two bar seems to be a good rate to work at. Well, two, two bar to three bar. If you're below that, it works all right. But um, there we are. You can see it's sort of starting to flow quite nicely. Now, I'm holding it here because on a count of about five, I want it to go from that height to that height. That's the sort of flow rate I tend to work on. So one and two and three and four. That's, that's great, possibly just a little bit slow. I tend to start a, a print a bit thick. One and two and three, four. Right, I think that's great. We'll work with that. Um, now the trouble is, although I can manually switch this off here, so that's the air pressure, the ooze should stop. There's a bit of latent pressure in here. So what I do is actually just release the pressure. That stops the ooze and then tighten it up again. Right. That then gets passed through the top. You can come through there but then you've got this pipe flopping around. Good idea to take it through the top 
and down and it just slots into position. Right now at the moment you can see this is actually touching our base. We print onto a wooden base but you can always check the level. We have made some little yellow marks on these that if you get all the yellow marks to the top that should represent absolutely what we call zero 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 right those are all there and my height is still actually slightly high so to lower the nozzle down that little bit it's this rubber ring that needs to be just moved up a bit and then that will lower down the city. Right, so with the little yellow marks all at the top you should be just about a millimeter off the board. Now this is calibrated if you're going to print straight onto the board with no clay base. But if you are wanting to print with a clay base, then you need to take out the bottom board that is the similar sort of thickness to the clay, so that when you come down again and that the yellow calibrations are there, you'll be just at the height of the clay. Right. Now, ideally don't move, certainly when the power is on, don't move the arms up and down because the little motors actually work as generators and then they will be sending a, a, a pulse of electricity back to your uh, electrics. When everything is switched off, very slowly you can move um, these arms up and down. Right, we start ready to start printing. So our file that's on the SD card goes in, into that slot there and it was upside down. Power on. Now, if for some reason it doesn't power up, check that this hasn't gone to red. If it has gone to red, then at the wall, pull off and then just re-power up and that comes to green. So your power pack needs to be green and then this will power up. And uh, the first screen is basically all your settings with Delta ready. So I press, this is your only control button. You press that one down and it comes up as that. And then you scroll by turning and you turn anti-clockwise. -clock and we go down to card menu. I don't use prepare, I don't use control. Card menu, press again to accept that. And all the files that are on your SD card are there. So we're looking for rabbit. Uh, the last uh, file to be put on is at the bottom. And I press that and the printer starts going away. The printer is set to rise up to the top first of all. And then there are three points at the top that it homes at. So it knows just where it is at. And then right goes back down again. So those were the end stops that it was hitting. So it has such zeros it or homes it. Now I will manually switch on the pressure that will start the extrusion. I've wet the board so that the clay then sticks to the board. It's a good idea to keep your first layer a little on the thick side and just so that it either has a strong base if it doesn't have a clay base to it or that your first layers of clay will stick to a clay base if you have a clay base. Then the rate of flow is then controlled over here. Um, Anti-clockwise is less pressure, clockwise is more pressure. At the moment my flow is absolutely perfect so I'm not going to go either way. Now it is a good idea just to keep the nib clean the whole time, just so with a wet paint brush I will wipe down and make sure that there's no clay gathering on the tip of the uh, extruder. Then 
if you've got quite a complicated form that starts leaning in or out, you'll start using the hair dryer. Right, so here we've got a readout. You can see 94, 95% of the print has been done and it's been running for 20, uh, 20 minutes. And that's the name of the, uh, the file that we're printing. And if we go back to the print, we're very near at the top. Now obviously the um, flow keeps going, so as the print finishes, you want to just withdraw the extruder out of the holder. We've had the hairdryer going on this slowly. 